In this episode, we're gonna check out this QNAP TS233 NAS. It's very affordable, very nice looking, and it could be one of the first NASs you as a creator might want. So let's have a look at this one. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license use the same code tn20 to get a 30 percent off check out whokies.com in the video description below first of all thanks qnap for sending this out for me also uh thanks seagate for sending these two hard drives to actually make this nas work so we can actually check it out how fast these are and we have like one of the best nas drives as well here available that seagate sent so these are the iron wolf NAS drives, 8 terabytes in size. This is Ironwolf Pro actually. So Ironwolf Pro, 8 terabyte NAS hard drives. By the way, if you didn't know, it, when you're buying hard drives for your NAS, make sure that you buy NAS rated hard drives because they're a little bit different how they work inside and they have a little bit different construction just so that all these hard drives can work next to each other and 24 seven and so on. There's another little box here that I asked if they could send this one as well. Just because if you buy this NAS, this NAS has only one gigabit ethernet port in the back. And you might be thinking that's gonna be a big bottleneck in your system, especially if you're transferring large files as a photographer, as a videographer, you're only gonna be limited to 125 megabytes per second. Ooh, you're odd. This guy here, this is a Q&A. So QNAP network adapter, UC5G1T. So basically what this guy does is it can convert your USB 3.1, which is five gigabits in speed to an RJ45 connection or just, you know, your usual ethernet. So basically what we have is USB-C on this one side and then ethernet on the other side. And now we can actually fully utilize the speed of those NAS uh, hard drives because those hard drives are quite fast. They go like, you know, two, 300 megabytes per second or something like that. So we're gonna test that out in a moment. Extended warranty coverage up to five years. That's a very nice thing to see. <laughs> okay, so inside the box we have the actual NAS enclosure. And then on the side of this, we have one RJ45 cable. So we have Cat5, I guess. There's some screws for the hard drives. We have a power cord and a power block. Quick installation guide here as well. There is a little flat screw head over there, but this is like one of those that you can actually open with like even a, a key or something bigger. Very simple. Is this screw gonna come up? Oh, yep, it's gonna come all the way out, so careful with that screw. Once that screw is out, then you just kind of slide the rest of the case up and to the side. You've got a little fan in the bank, you've got the hard drives, it's gonna pull the air in from the bottom and then this is an exhaust from the back, so it pulls it you know, in from the bottom and then out from the back. There is no SSD caching, but this NAS is not even meant for anything fancy. I think this is like one of the first uh, NAS kind of systems you should be getting or you should maybe think about as a creator. And why would you even need a NAS or why would this small one be good for you? As a creator, one of the main things you might come into is that when you're every anywhere you are you need to access your files and it's so beneficial to have something that's connected to the internet like your private cloud that you don't have to pay like loads on google drive or something like that you know it restricts everything as well and but have your own hard drive enclosure own private cloud that you can access anywhere in the world and store your files that you need to show to clients or show anywhere on there and that's connected to the internet but at the same time you can also connect to this with any of the devices you have connected in your home network or office network or so on. So laptops, PCs, you know, Macs, whatever, even phones, you can access those files and drop something there or share something there. Or if you want to send a big file to like your friend somewhere or a client that's more than two gigabytes and you can't use WeTransfer, for example, then you can just send the file from your NAS. They can download it straight from your NAS private link. But it also can act as a backup to your PCs or Macs or laptops later on, whenever something happens to your you know, files, you can actually get them back from here. And at the same time, this guy, why you have two hard drive bays in there is because if one fails, you'll still have the backup of the other one. So basically the files are cloned to both of these 
our hard drives. I don't think we actually need those screws when installing our hard drives just because these have like these quick release or quick buttons there. So I can literally pop the hard drive in, bend the sides a little bit and then boom, look at that. One of the hard drives is installed. So simple and we're going to do the same with the second drive here. I'm going to slide them back inside and now the other one. How simple was that? So when you look at the device and you're looking at the specs of this, you can see that this only has two gigabytes of RAM and an ARM quad-core chip and you're thinking, flip it egg, that's so weak. But it's actually well enough for what you're going to be using for this. You're not going to be doing some crazy uh, RAID system with SSD caching or converting lots of media files on it or playing games. So for that, just to run you know, RAID between those two or mirror those hard drives and get some of your data transferred across, that is absolutely fine. So when we look at the front, we have the USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. So this is a five gigabit USB type A port. And this you can also connect like to your hard drives or devices. Let's say you've just come back from your shoot. You've got your hard drive. You're gonna plug it in there, press one button and it starts to copy all of those files instantly onto the hard drive. You don't need to like worry about which files to go. Did I copy everything? It just copies everything. In the back, we have one one gigabit LAN port and then two USB A ports, but these are USB 2.0 speeds. So next I'm gonna set this up, configure this, and then we're gonna do some tests on this and to see actually how fast is this and how fast can we transfer some of the files. Uh, the NAS has been kind of mid setup process. It's quite simple actually, really when you look at the instructions in there, it says quick installation guide, just simply plug it in, follow the link online. It just takes some time to update this firmware and blah, 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 but it's very like self-explanatory, like next, next, next pretty much. And that's it really. So now once I'm done, I am logged in here. I'm on the web interface through this nook over there. Okay. So this is connected through one of the cables to my internet. This is connected wirelessly to the internet through the router. And then also from the front USB port, I have connected it to this there as well. So this is the UI of the NAS, you know, kind of the operating system, right? We go to the storage and snapshots here. We're gonna close that. You can do that as well if you want, but we're gonna go to storage and snapshots in here. As you can see, so there's no volumes and no storage pools. So what we do is we're gonna create a storage pool. We're gonna click next. We're gonna select the disks in here. As you can see, we've got two disks inside. 7.28 terabytes. RAID one, that means that one of them will be redundancy, backup basically, and the other one is working. So there's like data split exactly the same on both of them. And we're gonna press next. Alert the threshold, the no pool, current space. We're gonna take enable pool, current snapshot, space. Okay, let's put 5%. Next, perfect. We're gonna create it. Okay, new storage pool created. Volume, location in the storage uh, pool. So in terms of the volumes, I'm gonna leave it on thick volume. And then we're gonna go next. We're gonna call this main data, something like that, a terabyte set to maximum capacity. So you can make like lots of different volumes in there to see like lots of different drives in there. But I'm just of what I just want one big kind of storage space for all of this. As you can see, alert threshold uh, encryption. We're not going to do encryption, but you could if you wanted to. We're going to go next. We're going to finish this. This here is going to take some time. As you can see, uh, it's in initializing the drives and it's creating the RAID now in here. As you can see, it's 2% complete and the larger your drives are, the longer it's gonna take. But basically now it's figuring out like how the data is stored between those two desks and basically making sure that this is all mirrored. So whatever is in on one, you know, is exactly on the other one as well. So if, if one of them fails, we can still take the other one out, replace that one, and then it's gonna create the same kind of storage pool, everything on both sides. Now I've done this before on a Sioux store like NASA's, and uh, in my opinion, just like looking at the interface, obviously everything you get used to and it's all right, but a Sioux store interface 
seems a little bit more straightforward to me than this one. But that's like my first expression here, um, looking at that one here. Alrighty then, well, welcome back. It's been a long time since the earlier part of this video. I was trying to do a speed test on this and then I ran into a lot of different issues. I started troubleshooting, I started researching, I started looking for what the heck's the problem. Then now I've kind of come to a conclusion that I think this is just this particular model or the CPU, there's some kind of other bottleneck that kind of restricts the speed. So let me tell you what I mean and show you actual example of the speed transfers. So if you're expecting to get like quite fast speeds from this NAS, then this is not really the best option out there. Now, I'm not sure if this, this is just because of the hardware limitations of the actual you know unit here or some kind of other way, but I'll, I'll show you in a moment what I mean. First of all, I have to explain the setup I'm running over here. So I've got a switch over here. This is the Asuster um, switch. This is 2.5G. A switch. I've got an internet coming in here and then two cables. So basically one goes to the back of the PC so I can get uh, internet and then at the same time one goes to the back of this uh, unit over here so I can talk to this unit through the PC's 2.5 gigabit uh, like kind of connection but this is limited to one gigabit. So basically one gigabit goes in here and then to the 2.5 gigabit connection in there. Now then another connection is directly connected from the front USB to this um, you know 5G adapter to the back of the PC to the 10 gigabit part. So basically, I'll show you in a moment, I can switch between those parts. So connect to the back part, which will be one gigabit in speed, and then the front part, which should be five gigabits in speed. And then kind of this just helps me here connect everything together because it's an unmanaged switch. Let me show you now the speed test. I've got this uh, system resource monitor open over here so we can see like the CPU usage, you know, if anything is going to be bottlenecked or anything like that. Let's go to the overview, then it's easier. We can see all of the things here. This is connected through the five gigabit port over here at the moment. So if we go to the Q finder, we can see that on the drop down menu, there's two ports it can show the back port which is this one and then the front port shows 5g in here understand that that's that's good and we know that the front port is actually five gigabits in speed rated so let's do the back port first which is this one over here so if we go to network drives it brings this up here now on my actual finder folder so we're going to go to this folder that i created inside the system now this is on my ssd on the internal SSD, this is the Seagate Firecuda 530 super fast stuff. This is just like one file over here. I have a 30 gigabit file. I'm going to drag it in here and let's see the actual transfer speeds. So this is through the one gigabit part, talks to the computer through the back one gigabit part and then comes in here. And now as you can see, the transfer speeds are sh should be kind of equalizing somewhere around 70, 80, 90, somewhere there megabytes per second. It kind of goes up and down, up and down. Now, if we show the resource monitor here, we can see that the, you know, CPU is doing a little bit more at the moment and memory usage at the moment is like half used so it could use a little bit more of this. Network usage as you can see we're kind of peaking a higher there it's 92 megabytes per second even though this is like the the one gigabit part we should be getting like 125 megabytes per second or something like that but as you can see 80 somewhere around there so we know we're kind of limited you know theoretically through the Port. If I X this off, I'm going to go back to QFinder here. Let's change to the 5 gigabit port. And uh, we're going to go to network drives. Yep. Boom. So now we are connected to the same folder. But as you can see, the IP address is different. So this is the 5 gigabit port now that we're connected to. We're exactly in the same folder, as you can see here. We're going to go back to the internal SSD. We're going to drag this over to, if, to see if the file transfer speed is any different. So everything else is the same, just the actual connection pod. Now it's the front pod should be different, but as you can see, it hasn't changed at all. We're roughly going to be equaling around 70, 80 something megabytes per second. We hit like 100 megabytes per second in a moment, you see 100. But the thing is, these hard drives I know can go like up to 300 megabytes per second speeds because I'm using them in my ASUS or NAS at the moment and I can easily get like two, 300 megabytes per second when using uh, this connection. So with the five gigabits connection, I shouldn't be limited to the connection, but I should be limited to the drive speed. But as you can see, we're getting slightly faster transfer speeds here. We're pushing like 100, but it's not like five gigabits 
you know, difference. I'm not sure what is the bottleneck over here. We can see the adapter 2 is now uh, used here. This is the IP. We're going to be receiving still like around 91 megabytes per second. So averages slightly faster, but it's not like one to five gigabits in speeds because i know that you know it should be should be much faster none of the system here seems to be bottlenecked by it but there's some kind of bottleneck now i don't know if this is just because the system is struggling to kind of split the you know data between the two drives because obviously it comes in and then now splits it to write it in both of them or write it in one and then tries to clone both of them is that the issue over here i'm not quite sure if i'm reviewing this kind of qnut thing I think this is not really for editing on, even if you get the adapter, which is a cool adapter if you want to add it to your like a PC or something else, you know. But for this NAS, it doesn't really work. This front USB-C port really is meant for plugging in your hard drive or SD card reader or something like that. And then through one button over there, just copy the whole drive over to the thing, just like an easy transfer speed. Um, or transfer to your actual NAS. And what I would use this NAS for is really like a personal cloud storage where you need just like large files or something that you need to access over the internet to get over here. As you can see, maximum we're getting like 90 megabytes per second. So it's not like amazing. It's like literally editing from like an old hard drive from a good, you know, seven years ago where the actual hard drive speed was 100 megabytes per second even though this looks nice on the desk as you can see it's like very kind of minimal nice it still makes noise when in use i'm not sure if you can hear this so i'm gonna just stay quiet a little bit so you can hear it i can hear the fans and the hard drives going so maybe put it in another room or in a cupboard or somewhere where you can actually a little bit isolate this NAS from the system. But generally, I think it's an interesting option just because it's very, very affordable for two drives. And perhaps what you want to do is not even run RAID on those two hard drives. Just have them run separately, but just have two hard drives in your network system where you can just access and drop files on them and maybe you're not so bothered about like the redundancy aspect of it but rather have those drives very easily available on the web and like through all the different computers let's say there's some folders or some other files that people constantly need to pull or something like that or just transfer your smartphone uh, photos straight onto this drive and you can like offload it that could be a very interesting option also if you don't know it does have a lot of features and apps and so on so if you do want to check them out go to the um, home page of this one and just have a look at what you can do with this there's so much you can do with the QNAP you know um, OS system and there's lots of apps and things you can actually like install and get it used lots of different ways media hub or like entertainment center where you can have movies on and so on I'm still slightly disappointed in the speeds I was expecting to get much faster speeds through the front part there and the actual speed this doesn't quite work either if you run a speed test on either of these like network parts the network connection just pops and just somehow loses connection I'm not sure what's um you know wrong there i know this is not the unit because this is the second unit i'm actually using because i had to send this back because i thought that's the problem but it wasn't to me and the same the second unit has exactly the same thing so i'm not quite sure what's going on so all in all my conclusion about this is it's an interesting product but very very limited um for just very simple use uh, to have something on the internet and i think that's the main purpose for this to have a network drive, network attached drive that you can access anywhere in the world. Let's say you quickly need to pull something from your computer or something like that, or have it like sync with one of your folders or one of your drives on your computer that it syncs in there and then you can constantly like access it over the web, something like that. Just an interesting product. As always, if you want to pick it up, the link is in the description below. But I do want to know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know. I'll meet you there. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.